Hey everybody, welcome back to another Digital Making at Home video. And with our theme of making video games, I thought I'd throw together another short video for you on how to keep score inside your games. So, uh, I'm going to use my archery game, which you might have seen before in another video on Digital Making at Home. If you haven't, don't worry, that's fine. This will just be a discussion of variables and how we sort of make them interact with our game. But if you have seen that, then I'm going to show you how to add scoring to the archery game that you made before so that uh, you can add the timer as well if you haven't seen that video. And then this one here will let you keep track of the score and it will show you the score once your timer runs out. So my game's already had the timer added uh, and I'll go in and show you how that works again just quickly so that you can remember. You can also go and watch the timer video which is also on rpf.io slash home. Uh, and we'll start making all these bits of content for you so you can start making some really cool games at home. Because it's nice to make a really basic game, but it's also really cool to have those extra little bits of skills that make your game super duper cool. So what we'll do now is I'll just go through and open up my Scratch. So I'm logged in as me, uh, and I've got to my stuff, and so here's my archery game that we may have seen before. So I'm going to see inside that game, and it will load my project up just here. There we go, fantastic. So you can see here's all my code from previously. And when I click on my backdrop, it's got my timer code in there. Okay, so that's really cool. Uh, and I'll go back to my arrow now, because that's where we're going to be doing most of our work. Now, when we play this game, and I'll just make sure it doesn't make loads of noise at me. When I click go, so here we go, so the arrow's moving. And when I fire that there, 300 points. Uh, and I can shoot arrows at the board and we get different kinds of points track of those points. It just sort of tells you the points you scored, makes a funny noise, and carries on. There's no way to do it unless you're adding them in your head. And that sort of gets a bit old after a while. So what we want to do is we need to make something that can keep track of our score. And what that is, is a variable. So when we use variables in our code, what that is, a variable, and I'm sure you've probably heard this a couple of times, but what it really is, is a thing that we can change whenever we want to. It's a thing that uses that we use to keep track of stuff. Kind of like a notepad when you're writing down the score in you know a card game or anything else you're playing. Uh, you write down, you sort of add them up as you go, and you keep track of what the score is at any one time. And that's what our variable will be. So we can change it whenever we like. The, the program that we write will change our variable for us, uh, and then we can check that whenever we want. So when the game is finished, we'll say, okay, check what my variable is now, Scratch, and it will have a look, and it will tell us what our final score was. So to do that, we need to make a new variable. So we've got time, so we want to call this one something obvious and something easy, so I'm going to call it score. Again, you can call your variables anything you want, but for ease of reference, and if you come back to your work later or somebody else wants to use your work in the future, if you've called all your variables weird things like Jim, Jeff, and Steve, they're not going to really know what that means. So we'll call them time and score, uh, and I'll make it for all sprites as well. It doesn't really matter in this stage because we've got a very simple one with only one sprite, but usually you'd want your score to be variable to all sprites so that when they're touching it can change that, that variable for you. So in this instance, we've got my code here already. So as soon as I get to the yellow part, it plays my sound and gives me 500 points. Now I've got my score, okay, so the first thing I really want to do with it is when I click the green flag, I need to set my score back to zero. Okay, so I'm going to grab my block here, clip it in here, I might just... Uh, up my blocks a little, there we go. So I can set score to zero, and then it will broadcast my new arrow and start my game. You can see I've got my score here, so I'll just move that over to this corner. And when I click my green flag, fabulous, it sets it to zero and starts playing the game. My timer starts counting down, and then it finishes. Fab. So over here, here's my score. So if I get the bullseye, it plays my sound, it says 500 points for two seconds, and then I want it to change my score. So I'm gonna plug that in here. There we go. And now I've got 500 points here, so I change my score by 500. Okay, nice and easy. Then I'll take my change score and I'll do it for my next one. And I'll plug that in there. And I'm going to change my score by however many points I get. So that's 400. Fabulous. And now it doesn't really matter where you put that in that sort of list. Uh, as long as you put it kind of before the 400 points for two seconds, it means it will go through before it sits there for two seconds. Um, it might make a difference to you in the long run when you've got your timer running out. If you have those points coming through and they come through two seconds from now, you might miss out on them and get a frustrated gamer. So I'd put the score in before the two seconds. And I'll just move that one up there to make sure that's what I've done. So this one in here, underneath the sound again, but above my two second wait. And how many points do they get? They get 300 for this one. Okay, the next one will change my score. Play cheer, change my score by 200. Okay, and then the last one, change score by 100. Okay, cool. So 500, 400, 300, 200, 100. 
I'll go here and make my timer a little bit bigger because if I only have five seconds, I won't be able to get too many shots off. So let's make it 15 seconds. And then when I click my green flag, my timer starts counting, my arrow starts moving. Oh, I think I completely missed. I get no points for that shot. It hasn't stopped my game. Why is that? Who knows? Weird bug and scratch. Maybe I'll click the green flag again. But uh, no, that's okay. It does kill all my scripts. That's absolutely fine. So you can see there, that's how we add a score, everybody. We've got our script here. We've literally just made a simple variable to keep track of our score. And then every time the thing happens that we want, we just change score by that much. The important thing to remember is that you reset score Okay, so when I click green flag, it resets my score to zero, right? And that's very important because if we didn't do that, the next person to come along, we get to add their score to your score and that would be unfair, completely unfair. So we've got this here, it's all done. We've got our score, no worries there. You could even do some minuses, so I could set it up so that if I'm not touching any of those, I can subtract from my score. You simply change score by a minus number and that will bring your score back down. So maybe if you're playing Pac-Man and the ghost got you, you want to remove score. If somebody went out the edges or hit the lines in your maze, you can take score off as well. So I hope that helps you make some scorecards, guys, for your games. Uh, we'll keep making these videos. Share your stuff at rpf.io slash home. Anything you make, we'd love to see it. And I'm sure if you share your projects on Scratch, you get some really nice feedback from people there as well. Keep making stuff, guys. Stay safe, and I'll catch you later.